This YouTube series will cover material that we cover in our Introduction to Astronomy class from a meteorite found in Antarctica from the planet Mars and the search for life, all the way through to supernovas and black holes. Let's spend a few minutes talking briefly about the rest of the inner solar system, the other of the terrestrial planets. The planet Mercury sits closest to the Sun. Uh, being uh, the smallest of the terrestrial planets, uh, its core has probably solidified. It has no magnetic field and no way to protect any sort of atmosphere. So we're not surprised to find that Mercury has no atmosphere. Just like the Moon, it has a tremendous range of day and nighttime temperatures. In fact, Mercury's daytime temperatures rise to about 400 degrees Celsius and its nighttime temperatures plummet to a frigid 200 degrees below zero Celsius. It is marked by large numbers of impact craters. Probably realistically, it is covered with layers of regolith, much like we saw on the Moon. Uh, it has a huge uh, uh, impact basin known as the Caloris Basin that is the largest impact basin in the solar system. Uh, and it represents the fact that Mercury is in a shooting gallery. It's constantly being bombarded with uh, asteroids that might have otherwise hit the sun. Uh, in fact, this Caloris Basin is a full 1,500 kilometers across. The other interesting feature we find on this smallish body, the planet Mercury, which is not much larger than the Moon, uh, is we find these large cliff faces known as scarps. These scarps are sharp outcroppings on the surface of Mercury that, that, that last for hundreds of kilometers. We believe what happened here is as Mercury cools, its crust solidifies, and then as Mercury continues to cool, it shrinks, but the crust is kind of left high and dry and it cracks, producing these large scarps. We see similar features on another small body, the Moon. If we travel a little further out, but still interior to the Earth's orbit, we arrive at Venus. Now, Venus is marked by a thick atmosphere. Venus's atmosphere, which is almost entirely carbon dioxide, it's in the range of about 95% carbon dioxide, and that atmosphere is a full 100 times thicker than the Earth's atmosphere. And it's made almost entirely of carbon dioxide, which we remember is a greenhouse gas. So 100 times thicker than the Earth's atmosphere. So if you've got an atmosphere that's almost entirely carbon dioxide and it's 100 times thicker than the Earth's, there's going to be some significant warming going on. In fact, when you trap the light from the sun, the temperature on the surface of Venus comes out to about 450 degrees Celsius. Notice that is hotter than the daytime temperatures of Mercury, which is twice as close to the sun. And that's the temperature day and night on, on Venus. It just never gets cool. Venus is marked uh, by all that, uh, uh, that trapped gases and that heat leads to a lack of cooling on the surface. So Venus represents sort of an, a young Earth. Remember we talked about how the Earth was originally much more volcanically active. So Venus is the most volcanically active planet in the solar system. It turns out there's a moon in the outer solar system that beats that. But we'll talk about that later. Venus is incredibly volcanically active. There are virtually no craters on the surface of Venus. And the fact of the matter is, the surface is so hot it's almost molten. There's volcanoes everywhere, and it rains sulfuric acid. The only reason we know much about the surface of Venus is because of a spacecraft known as Magellan. Uh, the Magellan spacecraft uh, traveled to Venus in the 80s, and between 1989 and 1995 was able to map using radar the surface of Venus. If Venus is sort of a young version of the Earth, the planet Mars is what we might have in store in the distant future. The planet Mars is smaller than Venus, it's cooled faster, the core such as it is has solidified, 
the magnetic field has gone away. The lack of a magnetic field means that though Mars may have had a nice atmosphere in the past and certainly shows evidence from the rovers and the missions that have gone there from the Viking in 1976 all the way to the rovers that are there today. It looks as if there was a lot of water on the surface of Mars. Where did it go? The fact of the matter is Mars core solidified, the magnetic field went away, the atmosphere was plucked away by the solar wind. Mars's atmosphere is approximately 1 one hundredth the thickness of the Earth's atmosphere, and though it's made almost entirely, again, of carbon dioxide, 96% carbon dioxide, there is very little warming that goes on, making even the warmest days in the summertime of Mars, uh, you know, approaching room temperature on the surface of the Earth. What else does Mars have going for it? It has the potential for past water and potential for past life. It has polar ice caps, but these ice caps are not only made of water. The polar ice caps are made of both water ice and frozen carbon dioxide. It has the largest canyon in the solar system, the Valles Marineris, as large as the United States. Imagine that. And it also has the biggest volcano in the solar system, Olympus Mons. So even though the world itself is less volcanically active than the Earth, the lack of plate tectonics meant that when volcanoes formed, they stayed there for a long time. They never moved off the hot spot and stopped erupting. Imagine if volcanoes in Hawaii had been active for hundreds of millions of years rather than just the few million or, or million or so that they have been. Mars also is noted in that it has two moons. The two moons Phobos and Deimos are the only other two moons in the inner solar system. Dramatically smaller than the Earth's moon, there are a few, maybe 10, 15 kilometers across our own moon, 3,400 kilometers across. Spectacular. Where do we go next? We'll spend a little time talking about the Jovian planets, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune.